Hello everyone, this is Fabien Christin, and today we will have a look at the latest release of the Blender add-on Photographer. A lot has changed since the last video that was using version 3.5, and uh, we are now already at version 3.6.4. It contains a lot of stability fixes, so I would highly recommend you to update your add-on. Uh, if you look at the add-on preferences, you will notice that we have a few more options here. One of them being the Show Photographer panel in the Image and Node Editors. So the add-on will always be visible here in the uh, 3D view, but you can decide if you want to show it also in the image and node editors. We have the show the focus button in the 3D view header. Uh, that was already there before, and these are the buttons that are concerned. Before, it was just one option for all of them, including the lock camera to view, but now this is split, so you can decide which one of them you want to show. And also, you had to save and restart Blender to see the effect. Now you can do it and you will see it update in real time. So you know also what it does. And then we have the enable master camera feature. So I understand that this is kind of a niche feature. I don't personally use it every day. And um, the UI can feel a bit cluttered sometimes. So if you disable that, it will just clean it up in your camera list. You won't have this add master camera at the top. It would feel a bit cleaner. Then we have some new camera settings, the default pass part two. So when you create a new camera using this add camera button, it will assign some default settings and you can decide like what would be the default value for your pass part two. If you don't know what the pass part two is, it's the outside of your camera frame, which helps you when you do your framing. And this option is also directly accessible here in the scene camera and lens panel. So you can see if you want to change the opacity very quickly or if you want to disable it. So I'm using um, default value of 0 0.95. I think uh, the default of 0 0.5 from Blender is way too little. Like you don't really see a big difference, especially in dark scenes like this. So I prefer to have it a bit more opaque. Then we also have the uh, default focus plane color, which I will talk about in a few minutes. And then these default composition guides. So same thing when you create a new camera, every time you would have to usually go in your camera properties and then in viewport display, then you have to select your composition guides. But instead of having to do it every time you add a new camera, now you can do it by setting the preferences here and you can select the one that you prefer to have as a default. Then let's talk about the uh, changes in the panels. Here, we used to have the, the cameras and you would click on a camera to select it. And now this has changed. Uh, to select your camera, you can use this little arrow on the left. And now if you click on the camera here, you will be able to rename it. Remember that this is sorted alphabetically. So if I want to keep the same order that I had before, like if you use to that order, you can always put numbers in front and then rename your camera from here. So now, for instance, this one is going to be the 02 wide. And then the last one is going to be the 03 top down. What I've changed as well, I will show you that it's pretty cool. Um, imagine that you are like framing your scene in the viewport and then you would add a camera. Before, what you would do is that it would add a camera, but it would just crop it. Like the, the, the frame of the camera would be in the center of your viewport. But now if you add a camera, it will just keep the same framing as you had in a viewport. So it's much easier to add a camera from where you were in the viewport. Uh, this one is too dark because the exposure is darker, but yeah, here you go. We also have this new button now, which is the show focus plane. Again, I will talk about it very soon. I want to go through all the settings in the panels first. Uh, we have the render queue. It has a few more options now. You can directly access the render engine here. I liked when we had like in 2.7, we used to have the render engine always available at the top of the scene. So you would always see like what you are using kind of find it like now it's a bit annoying to have to go into this panel all the time. So since I change between EV and cycles often, I think it's handy to have it accessible here. We have the incremental uh, option. So before there was only one uh, option, it would increment for the saved file and the render slot for both at the same time. Now you can decide if you want to do one or the other. We have a new depth of field panel. Uh, before those settings were inside the scene camera and lens, but it was getting a bit crowded and I think it's better to 
recreate what we have in the camera property so it still feels familiar and we have this new option the show focus plane so let me show you that i will just remove that camera and i will look through my close-up camera and i will activate the depth of field so now my statue is out of focus and i will show the focus plane and i can see that the focus is actually done here where this plane is intersecting with my environment and as soon as i move this focus distance then I can see where my focus point is going to be. And now whoop, I'm on the eyes of my statue. You can change the color and the opacity. So here it's uh, very bright and uh, opaque because it's a dark scene. So with the exposure of EV, it makes it bright. But you can always change the opacity here. And uh, it works in the solid view. It works in the material preview as well. And in cycles. This is the main feature of uh, 3.6. And... What I like about it is that you can also um, see it from outside the view. So if you get out of your camera and you want to do your focus, you can really easily just select that cross and move it um, in the scene. And that will update your focus distance. But you would see visually where it's uh, ending up. It works with the camera frame, so it's always going to be linked to the camera frame if you change your resolution. Of your camera like if i change the ratio it will just update if i change the focal length it will also update that's pretty cool it also works with the lens tilt and that's something that is very cool because let me just revert what i changed if i turn off this hide focus plane and i will show you that if i use a extreme lens tilt now you see that the focus is on the eyes but if i change the lens tilt now the front of the face is blurred and the focus is on the hair. And that's something that happens when you do some lens shift. Um, it will affect the focus point even if the focus distance hasn't changed. And the focus plane is great because it exactly shows you what's happening. It would show you like where the focus has moved. So that's really handy to adjust, like do some fine tweaks when you use the lens tilt. I would just reset that. Also, it works uh, very well with the autofocus. So I have fixed some inaccuracies that I had in my math. I only saw that there were issues before because the focus plane was showing me that there were a bit like wrong results. So that's really, really cool that I added that. I could see my mistakes. But now it's going to be like super accurate. Exactly where you're going to pick, it's going to put the focus. And uh, the same for all the autofocus, the uh, autofocus tracking. It was something in the Raycast that I... I I did wrong so so it's pretty awesome and um, you can also do it from outside your camera now before this used to be uh, grayed out the autofocus continuous is still grayed out because it only works if you're looking through the camera but you can do it with the afs uh, and the af track the af track will work also with the um, focus plane so if i move it you will see that it will properly update where my focus distance is. That's pretty cool. I will um, just uh, show you something else. Yes, uh, the colors. The colors of the focus planes are per camera. So for instance, if I go into another camera and I want to show the focus plane, so I will turn on the depth of field, show focus plane, and then I want to color code it. So now every time I am in a scene, I can see where my camera is focusing. And that's why those buttons are here as well, because you might want to very quickly just disable them and not have to switch between each camera and go into hide focus plane. These won't render, by the way. They are just visible in the viewport, but they won't affect your renders. So you don't have to hide them before you render. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I can just very quickly switch that. Every time you're going to do a raycast, for instance, if I need to place a camera target, then it will just hide the focus planes and then it will show them back after the raycast. So it doesn't interfere with the raycast from the add-on. And I think that's it for the focus plane. If you see any other issue, you can always report them on the Blender Artist forum. Let's talk about the white balance. So the white balance picker was broken in 2.91 because there are a lot of changes happening in the Python API. They are changing the whole rendering of Blender because we are switching to Vulkan now. So 
So I had to fix that and um, I will go back to this camera. I think it's a good example. Let me just do a quick focus on the statue here. Now you will see that that's something cool. It will update as I move my mouse. It will just show me directly in real time the white balancing. Also, that white balancing has been improved. So again, there were some inaccuracies that I fixed and now it's going to be like super accurate and makes stuff look gray as expected. So yeah, you can just like move around and then you click to validate your white balancing. Something that has changed is in the image render. Let me just render. So here is my render and uh, I already have white balancing from the 3D view, but if you want to change it here, now we have this color swatch and it's going to be two clicks instead of one, but at least I'm sure that this is going to be more stable until the new Python API is finished. So you can just click on that color and then click on the eyedropper and do the same. It won't update in real time, but um, yeah, it still will work as you expect in Lightroom or Capture One. You don't have to reset it between the, the clicks as well. That's pretty much it for this uh, version 3.6.4. I hope you like it and feel free to contact me uh, to ask for a request or for support. Until next time, bye bye.